What's up everyone, Takedown here, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing my thoughts and predictions on All Elite Wrestling's Double or Nothing pay-per-view. It is right around the corner and I'm pretty excited for it because it is the first official All Elite Wrestling pay-per-view and I am familiar with a lot of the wrestlers that are on All Elite Wrestling right now. However, there still are a few that, because they came from the indies, I'm not familiar with them because I haven't seen much of their work. So the ones that I'm unfamiliar with, I'm going to try my best to give a prediction on their match. But with more All Elite Wrestling pay-per-views and the more matches I see them in, the more I'll be familiar with them. And in the future, I'll get, uh, I'll be able to do better prediction videos of their matches. But I'm going to try my best for the first pay-per-view right here. So up first, we have Hangman Adam Page versus Pac. Now I am familiar with Adam Page. I do like his gimmick. I like uh, the wrestler. is pretty good. But uh, Pac is basically Neville from WWE. Now, whenever Pac first came up from the NXT to the main roster in WWE, I didn't mind him then. I thought he was pretty good. But his last run in the WWE as the king of the cruiserweights, I didn't like that gimmick at all. It just, to me, it held down the rest of 205 Live because there's a lot of great cruiserweights, in my opinion. And to have somebody that was already established in WWE get put onto the cruiserweight division, to me, it kind of held the rest of the division down. But it is going to be exciting to see him in All Elite Wrestling as Pac, and it's going to be interesting to see what kind of gimmick he's going to bring to All Elite Wrestling. So for this match here, just because I don't know what Pac is up to these days since he left WWE, I'm going to say Adam Page is going to win this match, but I would like to see a new gimmick for Pac. That'd be very interesting because I think I could definitely get behind him. I just didn't like the King of the Cruiserweights gimmick he had whenever he was last in the WWE. So my final prediction for this match is Adam Page. Next is the over the budget pay-per-view, sorry, the over the budget battle royale. Uh, they keep changing the name and stuff like that, but I'm not familiar with a lot of the wrestlers that are going to be in this battle royale, and it's uncertain right now what the winner is going to get. I'm assuming a future championship opportunity because All Elite Wrestling is going to have their own championships in the future, but the Wrestlers that are going to be in this match are going to be Sonny Kiss, Kip Sabin, Brandon Cutler, uh, Ace Romero, Glacier, who I know a little bit of, Brian Pillman Jr., who I think just started wrestling last year. He's following in his father, father's uh, footsteps. Um, Sunny Days, MG, MJF, Joey Janelli, who I know a little bit about. Chuck Taylor and Trett Beretta. There's apparently going to be a few more names added to this, but this is all of the ones that are available as of the time I'm recording this. So, in my opinion, I only know three of the wrestlers, so it's it's going to be hard for me to make an honest prediction right now. But I'm going to say Trent Beretta because I did like his work in the WWE. He was not given that good of chance in the WWE, in my opinion, but I did like his work, and after leaving WWE, he got a lot better, in my opinion, so he has a good chance of winning this match. Joey Janela also, in my opinion, has a good chance of winning this match, but uh, those are going to be my two predictions, one of those two. I'm not familiar with the rest, but this is Battle Royale. Of course, anything can happen. Next is going to be a six-man tag team match for SoCal Uncensored. I hope I pronounced that right, because I'm not sure. We have Christopher Daniels, who I'm a huge fan of, Frankie Kazarian, and Scorpio Sky versus the Stronghearts, Kimma or Sima, T-Hawk, and L. Lindemann. I'm not familiar of those three, but so-called uncensored, uncensored, sorry, I'm going to be doing this the whole freaking video, I can tell. But uh, I'm a huge fan of Christopher Daniels. Whenever he was in Impact or TNA, if you remember the whenever it used to be TNA, Ring of Honor, him and Frankie Kazarian did great in that too. I like their work. I think Christopher Daniels for All Elite Wrestling is a scout for talent, but he also does in-ring stuff, hence why he's in the match. So this one right here, I think it's going to go to Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, and Scorpio Sky. I'm a huge fan of them. I do like them, and I have seen a lot of their work in the past, and they do great work in my opinion, so that's my prediction for this match. Next is going to be the Triple A All, sorry, the Triple A World Tag Team Championship match, who the current champions are the Young Bucks, which is Matt Jackson and Nick Jackson, if you're unfamiliar with them. Uh, they are the current champions versus... The Lucha Bros, Pentagon Jr. and Ray Phoenix, who are still part of AAA Wrestling, the Mexican wrestling promotion. 
Honestly, I haven't seen much of the Lucha Bros until they came over to, I think it's Impact, and then I think they did a little bit in uh, New Japan. I'm probably probably wrong with that. Ring of Honor, and now they're part of All Elite Wrestling, but they still are part of AAA, and I think Ray Phoenix is a single champion over on AAA right now, but I do like their work. I didn't see them until they came to Impact the first time. I think that was over a year ago now. But now I'm familiar with them, so this tag team match is going to be pretty epic in my opinion. Honestly, I was going to say the Young Bucks were going to win this match because that'd be interesting. But something tells me that All Elite Wrestling in the future are going to have their own uh, tag team championship instead of having triple A's. So since the Lucha Bros are still part of triple A as well, because that's one thing that I like about All Elite Wrestling is whenever you sign a contract, the wrestlers who sign a contract with All Elite Wrestling... They can still work for other companies, they can still do other projects, work the indies, work other events, as long as they can still make the All Elite Wrestling events and press and everything else that All Elite Wrestling is doing. As long as they can still make that, they can work at other companies, which I think that's a lot better than WWE, where if you're in WWE, you're restricted to only WWE. With that being said, since the Lucha Bros are still part of AAA, I see the Lucha Bros winning the AAA World Tag Team Championships. The next match is one that I can't honestly give a prediction on, and that is the triple threat female match. It is Dr. Britt Baker versus Nyla Rose versus Kylie Ray. I just am not familiar with either one of them, and it's just not fair to me or to those wrestlers for me to make a prediction on their match when I'm not familiar with them. The more All Elite Wrestling pay-per-views and the more matches I see them in, of course, I'll get more familiar with them for the future. But for this match, I can't make an honest prediction for it, unfortunately. And the last two matches, in my opinion, either one could be the main event, and I would be okay with it. Up first is Cody versus Dustin Rhodes. It has been confirmed and announced for the pay-per-view a while ago that Dustin Rhodes, aka Goldust in the WWE, was leaving the WWE and was going to be facing Cody at the Double or Nothing pay-per-view. Now, a lot of people are wondering why he isn't using the Goldust name and the gimmick which he's used for about 20 years now reason for that is wwe owns the rights to it and to me i think that's crazy i think he given it that he's been the character for 20 years he should have the rights for it but regardless he doesn't so he's going to be appearing as dustin rhodes with from what i see from the posters and everything it's basically going to be the gold dust gimmick except it's going to be red and black i guess it looks like it's going to be his face is only going to be half painted, so it looks pretty cool, not going to lie. A lot of people are questioning why that was announced to be Cody's opponent, and why Dustin Rhodes is going to be facing Cody once again, brother versus brother, kind of like they did a few times in the WWE. And for me, personally, I have a backstory tour, uh, for it, and a theory on why they are facing each other for this match. For me, I think it boils down to the age of Goldust or Dustin Rhodes, which is going to be how he's going to be in All Elite Wrestling. It's not certain if he's going to have other matches in All Elite Wrestling. It's not certain if he's staying, if he signed a lengthy contract with All Elite Wrestling, or if he's going to be a backstage producer or something like that. It's just unfamiliar at this time, but given his age, I honestly feel this is going to be Dustin Rhodes or Goldust hanging up his boots at the end of this match. I think that's something that's going to be iconic, and a lot of people are questioning why if that is going to happen, why didn't he retire in WWE? And let's face it, out of everybody Goldust has faced, to retire to your brother and have your last match be facing your brother, I think that is special and that's why he wants to do it. If that's what's going to happen, I would be okay with that. Uh, honestly, if it is going to be his retirement match, which I doubt they're going to be announcing until after the match takes place... I think it's going to go to Dustin Rhodes. Either way, I think it's going to go to Dustin Rhodes. Now, Cody Rhodes is epic since leaving WWE. He really shot up, in my opinion, and he's pretty much a top star. But something tells me, because Cody Rhodes' opponent was Dustin Rhodes, and it was announced to be Dustin Rhodes, something tells me it's going to be uh, Goldust or Dustin Rhodes' last match, and he's going to be retiring after this. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens, but my final prediction is going to be Dustin Rhodes. And the last match is going to be a part two, and that is going to be Kenny Omega versus Chris Jericho. Of course, they fought in New Japan Wrestling. That was a huge match, an epic match. And to me, that match was awesome. I watched that match. 
it was pretty good. It went to Kenny Omega. He won it that back then. Now that they are both on All Elite Wrestling, both of them were the top free agents whenever they were signed from All Elite Wrestling. Honestly, I see this match going to Chris Ang uh, Chris Chris Jericho. I almost said Chris Ang Angle. I don't know why. I see this match going to Chris Jericho, and it's unfamiliar if Chris Jericho what gimmick he's going to have. I don't think he's going to be doing his face paint, which he did in all a. Uh, uh, New Japan Wrestling, I don't think he's going to be doing that, um, but he said he doesn't know right now what he's going to do, but he wants to do something new or something that's pretty epic. He loved his New Japan Wrestling character, but he, he's not sure if he's going to bring that over. Regardless, this is the second time they're going to be facing. I see this match going to Chris Jericho. That, to me, is an ideal situation. And then in the future, it, in a different pay-per-view, down the line, Maybe the two of them can face for the All Elite Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship. I honestly see that being in the works. If not, it might be a triple threat or fatal four-way match with other top guys. Because in my opinion, All Elite Wrestling has a lot of top guys. But these two are among the top right now, in my opinion. So the fact that they're facing each other, I honestly see it going to Chris Jericho. And they might have a third match in the future to basically break the ice to see who is the better man. That's my prediction for this match, but like I said, some of the people I'm unfamiliar with right now, but the more I watch All Elite Wrestling, the more pay-per-views they have, the more matches they're in. In the future, if they're in matches and uh, I do another pr prediction video on the pay-per-view, I'll know them a little bit better and I'll be more familiar with them and be able to give a better prediction on the ones I'm unfamiliar with. But they still have a lot of guys that I'm familiar with, whether it was them on Impact or Ring of Honor or WWE. I did, I did know co quite a few of the wrestlers that are in this pay-per-view and that are part of All Elite Wrestling. So this, these are my predictions on All Elite Wrestling's Double or Nothing pay-per-view that is coming out very soon. I hope you guys did enjoy. I know I did stutter a lot in this, but that's because some of the names I'm unfamiliar with right now. I'm just reading them off the paper, so I probably butchered a lot of them. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Please take care. Peace.